After that, we saw the banking markets collapse, right? We saw the banks like Credit Suisse, SVB, SBNY, all of these banks collapse. Now, what's fascinating about the last two weeks is that tech stocks have been a beneficiary of money flow that's been going out of the bank stocks, right? We've also seen Bitcoin do well. Doesn't mean Bitcoin can't break 30,000. Let's keep that in mind. It just means that probabilities are the way I position myself. So I started a little bit of a short position at 28,450, right around 28,5. When could we see 12 to 13,000? I'm looking at. Now I'm pumped because today is a massively important day. All right, we have the Federal Reserve announcement at 2 p.m. Eastern time, followed by the key, and this is the big one, the key press conference. Now you might say, well, why is the press conference more important than the rate hike or lack thereof? The answer is because that is the guidance that the markets will queue off of. Right now, the markets are pricing in about an 85% chance of a 25 basis point rate hike. I think that's exactly what they're gonna do. I'm gonna explain real quickly, give you guys the rundown of why you're likely gonna see 25 basis points. Jerome Powell was in front of Congress. We had just gotten out data that was inflationary and he basically said to Congress, listen, we may have to go 50 basis points. After that, we saw the banking markets collapse, right? We saw the banks like Credit Suisse, SVB, SBNY, all of these banks collapse, stock prices of all these banks collapsing as well. I mean, take a look at FRC recently, down huge from the all time or even 52 week highs. So the bottom line is that the Fed was put in a pickle here. They don't wanna go to zero right now because there still is number one, inflation. Number two, if they go to zero, right? If they go to zero interest rates, the markets are gonna queue off of that, that things are a lot worse in the banking sector that things are very, very chaotic, that there's a potential catastrophic black swan event coming. And so ultimately what the Fed will do is probably thread the needle with a 25 basis point. This way they don't really raise much, but they raise just enough to kind of keep confidence that they're in control and that they're not, that we're not looking at a major banking collapse that's even greater than what we've done. He has to guide this economy through this banking process, this banking crisis. The markets and the economy, no doubt, slowing down due to this. He has to see that. And he also has to kind of leave the door open for future rate hikes if that does happen. But I'm looking for a 25 basis point hike and then a kind of pause. So we could be looking at not a pivot. A pivot technically would be dropping rates. But I think after the hike today, you're looking at a pause until more data comes out and more stability in the banking market, right? So again, if we look at the dollar, it had this three bar surge, one, two, three. Then bullish consolidation, sideways consolidation after a three bar surge is definitely bullish. We then saw upside in the US dollar. Since the highs here and the banking crisis began, we've seen the dollar start to decline. Interestingly enough, look at where we find ourselves back into going into this Fed decision. So interestingly enough, does this announcement, does the Fed calm fears about a banking crisis? If the Fed calms, and think about this, right? If the Fed calms the banking fears down, does the dollar bounce? Does the Fed look like they're in control? Does the Fed say that the bleeding has been stemmed or, or stopped in the banking sector? Does that yield a bounce in the market? Now, what's fascinating about the last two weeks is that tech stocks have been a beneficiary of money flow that's been going out of the bank stocks, right? We've also seen Bitcoin do well. We've seen gold just ripping higher until yesterday's rally in the banking stocks when it really came back in. Everything I do is all about probabilities. There's no, I feel, my gut tells me, that's BS, all right? Anyone who's giving you advice based on what their gut tells you, shouldn't you shouldn't take that advice again probabilities favor a bounce in the dollar which tells you the, the fed is going to try to reestablish the fact that things are not that bad even though they're going to take kind of a, a slight hike and pause mentality they're going to calm fears and that should give the dollar a bounce bitcoin is also at a major pivotal level do you guys see and, and by the way for those of you that have followed fed decisions or any big decision jobs numbers um anything like that what you'll notice is charts tend to be at major pivotal levels going into these announcements. 
All right. So when I look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin has continued to chop sideways over the last couple of days, ever since it tested the 28,500 resistance. And by the way, why is that resistance? All right. Because it is the lowest point. Check this out, guys. 28,500, which is the high that we just hit over the last couple of days. It is the low pivot of the mid bull cycle of 2021. So what we know is we're at a pivotal level going into this Fed announcement. If we see a pop on Bitcoin, there's a major level right up here. This is the big one at 30,000, even numbers. If you're a technician and you know charting, you know that even numbers, even numbers matter in charts because they matter to our human psyche. Naturally, up here, guys, up here in our brains, we are drawn to even numbers. We talk about 100,000. We talk about 30,000. We talk about a million. These even numbers on a physical basis hold weight. So if we see a rally above 28.5, your next resistance is going to be a pierce of 30,000. For me, I'm going to be looking to inch in some more on the short side of Bitcoin. I'm in the camp that I pay, play probabilities. Doesn't mean Bitcoin can't break 30,000. Let's keep that in mind. It just means that probabilities are the way I position myself. So I started a little bit of a short position at 28,450, right around 28.5. And I'll add to it at 30 and change, a pierce of 30. Now, if we establish ourselves above 30,000 and we stay above for like seven days or so, and I'm looking for not just a pierce, a pierce, a close above doesn't mean anything. I want to see a close above. That would be significant to me. When could we see 12 to 13,000? I'm looking at two to three months out if this 30,000 line gets rejected and we see price start coming back in. All right, so two to three months out, 12 to 13,000, and then likely six to eight months out before we could see that 9,000, 10,000 target if it does. Basically, if we break that 15,000 low, then I actually do think 9,000 is the likely culprit here. Okay, so that's where we are right now. And again, let's keep an eye on the Fed decision. Again, pivotal decision that Bitcoin will likely queue off of. All right, here's your chart on gold. Basically, what we see on gold is that the consolidation is continuing. So basically from 2020, from the COVID dip and then the reversal to the upside where we made this high just north of $2,000 at 2075, you have been sideways chopping. All right. All of you, if you're new, maybe not. If you've been around me for a little while, you know this pattern formation. This is a classic bull consolidation pattern. Right. So if we go out and we look at the chart here, gold's been in an uptrend up until that point, And then it's been in a side trend. You want to see something crazy? Go back to the 1970s. All right. Look at this same exact pattern formation. All right. Here it is. The 1970s, you had two to three years up like we had two to three years from 2017 to 2020. Then you had consolidation pullback. And then look at the run that gold experienced. To me, this is telling me the future. This chart, which is historic, is telling me the likely probability of what is going to come on gold. Now, do I think it's going to do a 9x? I don't think so, right? 9x seems a little outlandish to me on gold, which is what it did back in the 70s. But is it possible that we could get a 3x? Could we see $5,000 an ounce in two to three years on gold? Maybe 6,000? I do think so. Basically, what one of the things that I queued off of last year even though gold did not have a stellar year, the dollar was up 20%, 20% and gold was basically flat to negative on the year. That should not happen. All right. In a, in a perfect world where things are equal, if gold, if the dollar is up 20%, gold should be down 20% ish. All right. The fact that you saw gold holding steady, that was barely down on the year. That's telling you big money is buying in big money. And we know central banks are buying in. We know them, that the big money banks are buying in. So what that tells me is that gold continues to be one of my favorite assets for the remainder of this year. Do I think eventually Bitcoin will be my favorite? Yes. You guys know I'm a long-term huge bull on Bitcoin. I just don't trust the rally just yet because, again, probabilities are how I analyze everything that I do. All right. Here was your high pivot on gold. Here was your double top. Double tops, you get big pullbacks. All right, now remember this because it will be useful in your future analysis. So here's your pullback off your first high. Here's your double top. Here's your pullback. What, what technical analysis tells us is that if we hit that level again, you only get a small retrace. You'll get a little bit of a retrace like this, much smaller, and then the breakout likely takes hold. So that's what I'm expecting. I think within the next month or so, we likely hit that triple top. And then we see a pullback, a very small pullback, 
a check back. Essentially, you're going to get sellers there. People are going to say, oh, it's at resistance again. Let me sell. Smart money is going to buy that pullback and it's going to blast off to the races. So Ripple's pulling back today. Yesterday, it got a nice little breakout. You had this downward sloping channel. You could see here it was into this. Look at this longer term trend line here. It was right into that lower level right there. That's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool chart. And Ripple did have an ignition to the upside. It did hit resistance, though. Take a look at all this sideways chop over here. That's going to tell you that there's resistance. Now, let's do a quick educational piece here. Why is this resistance? Why is this area resistance? And the answer is very simple. There were a ton of people, and this is really good education, guys. There were so many investors that were buying in this whip, right? It went up. It went down. It went up, which buyers have to be buying it up. Then it came down. Then it went up more, coaxed in more buyers. Then it came down. Then it chopped sideways, more buyers in the chop. Then it went up again, more buyers came in. So basically what you had was a ton of new money was coming into Ripple here in this sideways chop. Then all of a sudden the bottom fell out of Ripple and we went all the way back down. So all of those people that bought over here are now underwater. So what happens? All right, this is human psychology 101, and this is great, great stuff. So when price goes back into that level, how many of us have said, oh my gosh, I was getting crushed on that trade, and now I'm break even. I, I just want to get out. Again, Coinbase here, you can see had a nice move up. The only level I'm looking for on Coinbase where I would potentially short this today or in the next few days, 100 even number, this pivot area right up here. This is a nice little area. But it's just too risky. If we're going to see a pop, well, and I should say, if potentially we're going to see a bounce on on Bitcoin, let's say to 30,000, like let's say it pops to 30, you got to assume, and again, this is a risk. It may not happen, but I don't want to get caught with my essentially pants down in this scenario, right? So basically, if we go to this level here, which we're at already, 86 is resistance. But if Bitcoin can push to 30, you got to assume this gets another leg up, shorts covering, maybe it gets to about 100. $100 gets me short on Coinbase.